So boys and girls, now you're ready to make something out of your salt dough. And this one doesn't have any food coloring in it because if you don't have any food coloring, that's okay. You can color it later. It's not a big deal. I know that some people just don't have food coloring if they don't decorate cakes. I'm a big cake decorator, so I do. But um, the red, yellow, and blue is fine and then you can mix it to make the secondary colors. So. That's a good thing. We know our color mixing. We hope, you know, I hope you know your color mixing. Anyway, well, these are the ingredients or the, the um, materials that you're gonna need. But if you don't have exactly the same thing I do, that's okay. Don't worry about it. We'll, we'll figure out a way. And here they are. You'll need your salt dough, a cardboard box of some sort, crayons and markers, uh, watercolors if you have them, some Elmer's glue, a pencil, Sharpie marker if you have it, or just a black marker, scissors, and a cup that you can use to cut the dough with. So I've taken just a sheet of uh, printer paper and I folded it in half. That's a good size for your background. And I'm just going to lightly trace around that. And then I'm gonna cut it out trying to cut exactly on the line, so it has a nice edge to it. Now I'm just gonna color the background. I think I'll use some blues. For our earth, we're gonna need some green, so I'm gonna take a bit of blue a bit of yellow and I'm going to make some coils. Coils are just long ropes of clay and then I'm going to twist them together and fold them and make green. Perfect. Now I'm going to take some of my green and I'm gonna take some of my blue, and again, I'm gonna roll it into a coil. And this time, I'm not gonna mix it completely. I'm just gonna twist it and bend it and fold it a little bit. And then, maybe I'll put a little bit more right there. I'm going to flatten it in my hands. And press it down. I think I want it up a little higher. And then find a cup. That's just the right size. And there you got your planet Earth. Now it's gonna slide around a bit, so I'm just gonna take some glue. And if you don't have glue at home, you can improvise and mix up some flour and water into a runny paste and use that that should adhere it. So there's my earth. Now I'm going to add some decorations to it. I wanna add a heart, so I'm gonna take some of the red. Now you can put an inspirational saying on here. On here, I said, we're all into this together. Um, you can make it as a Mother's Day gift and say, you mean the world to me. You can get creative and kind of clever with what you write on it, but make sure that you spell everything right. All right, I've got a teardrop shape, and so now I'm just going to take a pencil, and I'm going to go like that to make it into a heart, and then sort of flatten that and shape it, and make sure that the heart has a nice point on it. And then I'm gonna put a little bit, you can either use for, when you put the dough on the dough, you can use a little water, that will do it, or you can use some glue. And then 
there is we all need some tender love and care would be another good saying. And I think that outside is a little boring. So I add these little sort of exclamation points all around it. And that's kind of a fun thing to do. Just draw roll little tiny balls of clay. Whenever you sculpt with clay, there's basic forms that you use. It's a sphere, okay, like this. You can make cones by rolling them, and that's how I make the little exclamation points. You can make cubes, and that would be just pinching them like this, okay? Or you can make cylinders, which are considered coils. Now this is a little bit too dry, so I'm adding a little bit of water. You can keep this clay indefinitely as long as you have it in a plastic bag, but the longer you keep it, it gets kind of sticky. Uh, this is some that I made yesterday, and it's pretty mushy. You might, if, if you store it, when you use it again, you might have to add a little bit of flour. I'm going to finish this, and then I'll turn it back on, and I'll show you how to do the finishing touches. Once you get all of them made, then you'll want to glue them down so they don't fall off. So now if you're going to write something on the bottom, um, I would highly recommend that you practice first. Here's that piece of paper that I folded in half. And write what you're going to write in pencil. And I'm going to write, uh, you mean the world to me. So I'm going to start here. And trying to center it. Now, I think I probably would want to put this down here, world to me. Okay, so now I can kind of center that to figure out where I'm going to start. Um, so the you should probably be about right here. You, and since this really isn't a sentence, it's more like a title, I'm going to capitalize all the bigger words mean the, and then I'm going to start the W in a little bit, so it's centered. World to me. Okay. And then outline it in marker. Now if you used crayon on the background, you're probably going to want to use a Sharpie. And I like to put little dots on the ends of my letters just to make them a little bit more decorative. Now you can also paint it. You can you can add some more color with markers if you want more of an intense coloration to this. You can paint it with watercolors or you can just leave it as is. I wanted that a little bit brighter to put some finishing touches on your picture, just to make it look a little more defined and sort of cartoonish. I like to just on one side, just put these little dash lines. And they don't have to be outlining the whole thing, maybe a little dot and line, and just go around each one. I'm going to use the right side as my the 
the side that I will put those little dashes and dots on. And if you want to add a little bit more color, since that marker is Sharpie, it won't run. You could do this before you use your watercolor marker on it. Watercolor markers are just like regular Crayola markers. But if you want to just make the, the colors a little bit more intense, maybe some more yellow on there. Um, and on the earth, if you want to make it look a little bit more green or blue, just to add some finishing touches on it. And with salt dough, you don't want to make it too thick. Like you can't, you can't use a big, huge chunk of salt dough because what happens is the outside dries and then the inside dries, or it doesn't dry, and then it gets kind of moldy and icky. So you have to make smaller things with the salt dough or flat things. There's a lot of different recipes and how-tos on, online. But that is my... You mean the world to me. And boys and girls, you do mean the world to me. And I miss you very much. I hope you have a great time making this and it spurs you on. I do have one other project that I'm going to show you how to do. Now, this is not, you don't have to do it, but um, you have some, you probably will have some leftover dough. And uh, I don't know. It's a, just a little frog. But this would be kind of a cute thing to do. And if you want to do that, I will, you can watch the next movie. Have a great day, guys. Miss you. Bye-bye.